Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com to another blog and to another podcast. Today we continue in our study of the gospel according to Mark. We're in chapter 5, verses 21 through 25, which reads, When Jesus went in the boat back to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him there. A leader of the synagogue named Jairus came there saw Jesus and fell at his feet. He begged Jesus, saying again and again, My daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her, so she will be healed and will live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed Jesus and pushed very close around him. Among them was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. That's Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 25. Today we return to our study of Mark chapter 5 where the Lord Jesus delivered a man of demon possession. As a result, the Lord gave this once out of control man a life-changing story that was useful in sharing the gospel with others. The life-changing story the Lord Jesus gave this formerly demon-possessed man screams at us that the Lord Jesus is not repelled by us. No matter how messy we are, and regardless of how messed up our lives are or have been. When we recognize that the Lord Jesus is not put out by our messed up condition, we are naturally moved deeply. This largely changes the hearts of all who encounter him. Once we begin seeing that he is not turned off by our messiness and that he doggedly pursues us no matter what, it is as if our eyes are seeing for the first time. Those to be pitied in this world are not the formerly demon-possessed man. Those to be pitied are those who have eyes that are yet closed to the wonderful person who chose to go through hell to be our Savior. In verses 21 through 23 of today's passage, we read, When Jesus went in the boat back to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him there. A leader of the synagogue named Jairus came there, saw Jesus, and fell at his feet. He begged Jesus, saying again and again, My daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her, so she will be healed and will live. Jairus was the official in charge of the synagogue. In the first century, the ruler of the synagogue was the one who was in charge of maintaining the building and organizing the synagogue services. Jairus was the highest standing spiritual authority in the city of Capernaum. He was probably a Pharisee, and they were not that fond of the Lord Jesus. So, It's interesting that a man of his stature and standing came to the Lord Jesus to ask for his 12-year-old daughter to be healed. Jairus, given his position, had to overcome his prejudice toward the Lord Jesus. In order to do so, he had to overcome his pride. But he was desperate because the life of his daughter was at stake. And when we are desperate, we are more prone to embrace the very valuable characteristic of humility. Suffering always involves a certain measure of desperation, and it is out of such a context that we are most likely to look up to the Sovereign One. Until we are in these types of conditions, We typically live our lives looking inward or outward, but rarely upward. But when something happens like this, we are more prone to call upon the Lord. That's why C.S. Lewis said, God whispers to us in our pleasure, but he shouts to us in our pains. Obviously, Jairus had heard of the Lord Jesus and his power to heal. So he reached out to him. Jairus risked his position as the ruler of the synagogue when he went to the Lord Jesus for help. 
According to verse 22, Jairus bowed down before the Lord, which was an act of worship. Jairus was the kind of Jew least likely to seek out the Lord Jesus for help, but he was desperate and he loved his daughter so much. Perhaps Jairus was thinking the Lord Jesus had healed others before. Maybe he could heal my little daughter. What a picture of a loving father who is most willing to do anything for the good of his daughter. In fact, according to verse 23, Jairus came to the Lord Jesus begging. There's that word again. How humiliating was this moment for this proud religious leader. And yet, he embraced it. God responds to such displays of humility. In James 4, 6, we read, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. In this case, the request of this hurting father was specific. He requested that the Lord Jesus come and put his hands on her so that she would be healed and would, would, would live. Life, he desperately hoped, was to be found in the touch of the Lord Jesus. As we study the Gospels, we often see the Lord Jesus reaching out with his hand to touch people. In Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 and 15, he touched Peter's wife's mother and took away her fever. According to Matthew 9, 27 through 31, he touched the eyes of two blind men and gave them sight. In Mark 7, 31 through 35, we learn that he touched the ears and the tongue of a deaf mute and gave him the ability to hear and speak. And according to Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 42, he touched a leper and made him whole. In verses 24 and 25 of today's passage, we read, So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed Jesus and pushed very closely around him. Among them was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. The emphasis in this story, which will be interrupted by a woman with a health issue of 12 years, is that of desperation. Here we find a fascinating contrast, and I believe it's here by design. Jairus had a 12-year-old daughter, and this woman had a 12-year-old disease. For 12 years, this daughter brought nothing but joy to Jairus, and for 12 years, this disease brought nothing but torment to this woman. These stories are our stories. We all, at various times, have been confronted with situations that made us desperate. It has been my experience that when I dig down deeper in my walk with the Lord, that I discover real reality. It has been my experience that when on the heels of some of the most desperate moments in my life, that I have learned to entertain the right questions. And as a result, I have discovered that it is the Lord who has the right answers to those questions. When we are desperate for the Lord, we are in a good spot. Our desperation causes us to throw aside the dumb stuff in life that we tend to value more than we should. In the end, our desperation serves us causing us to ask the right questions and to invest in the right kingdom, his kingdom and his definitions for the life that we all long for. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helpful to you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, Have a great day.